Hello everyone, so let's start exploring the quantitative methods in more details. So we'll start with naive methods or naive forecasting approach, naive model, whatever you want to say it. Uh, so as the name stands, this method is very simple. So the forecast for next period is equals to the actual demand from the previous period. So we don't have any complex mathematical model to do the predictions here. You will be amazed. I mean, in my experience, I came across several restaurants and even um, the grocery stores which use the knife forecast uh, in order to predict the future demand. The fact is that there are several advantages, like it's simple to use and easy to understand. You don't need to be a mathematician or you don't need to know the complex equations to implement knife forecast. Very low cost uh, because we're not spending much time on the analytics that decreases the overall forecasting cost. But you know that it's going to be pretty inaccurate because uh, there are other factors which can alter the future demand. We can't simply rely on the data from the previous period. So when we talk about knife forecast, there are three approaches to go about the knife forecast. So let's put the terminology in place. So F stands for forecast and A stands for actual. So when I say actual, the actual sales or the actual demand for a particular product. So for a stable time series, the forecast for next period is going to be actual for the previous. So let's say in this case, I want to forecast for period seven is going to equals to actual for period six because T represents the period. Let's take an example. So I want to use a data set which is provided in the Excel sheet. So here's the data set. So the data is given on the for the monthly basis so that's my period right period one period two three four and so on right up to period 11 and we want to predict for period 12. here's the item sold which is the actual so based on the simple naive method i'm going to say the forecast for period t is going to actual t minus one so which means f12 forecast for period 12 is going to be actual for period 11. So when I'm predicting using simple naive method, so F12 is going to be 17, right? I hope this makes sense. Pretty straightforward, simple, easy to use. Okay, so now let's come back to a point. So we said for the stable time series, we don't have any trend or seasonal component. What if you have seasonal variation in your data set? So for the seasonal variation, we're going to use actual for the previous season instead of previous period. So I'm going to go back to the Excel sheet. Okay, so we're going to work with the time series model naive forecast uh, data set. So in this case, I have period, which is workdays going from one to 15. And we'll explore the cupcakes because in cupcakes data set, we have the seasonal pattern. So if you are not clear about the seasonal pattern, select the data set, go to insert and insert a chart, right? So in this line chart, we can easily see that uh, there's a spike on period one, then after five days and a spike on day six, another five days on day 11, then so based on this, we are expecting another spike on day 16. Okay, so let's work through it. So I'm going to add another column here. I'm going to say forecast cupcakes. So whenever you're adding any information to the Excel, give it meaningful names so that you can track uh, what you're doing. So I'm going to highlight. So we have a spike on day one, spike on day six, spike on day 11, right? So when it comes to forecasting, if I use the simple naive method where I'm not considering any seasonality, I will end up forecasting uh, for cupcakes as 22, right? Uh, so which is demand for the previous period. But given that there's a seasonality in this data set, I'm going to go way off when it comes to actual demand. So even in a simple scenario, if my actual is going to be 47, I cannot serve my customers who are going to come for cupcakes my service level will be compromised because I'm turning down those customers. So given that there's a seasonality, so I would be better off using the actual from the previous season. So which means it's going to be for period 16 equals to D12. 
so which means actual from the previous period so you could have type 47 here but i want to show you how you're going to apply the formulas as well right so it's always better to automate your excel sheets as much as possible so now let's break it down what we have in terms of formula ft the forecast for the next period is going to be actual t minus n so n is the number of seasons right so in this case we are predicting for the t is equals to 16 and there's a gap of five periods right so that's why we're going to use value of n equals to five so for instance there's a peak in period one peak for period one and after that one two three four and another peak at period five so after every five periods we are having a peak so which means f16 is going to be a 16 minus 5 so which means a 11 so that's why we got 47 here right so similarly if you're calculating uh, if you're forecasting for period 17 so this is going to be equals to d 13 right because every five periods we repeat a season okay so that's the idea of seasonality i hope that this makes sense okay so then the final one let's come to the third one what if there's a trend in the data set so if there's a trend in the data set we have a different formula so for the trend we are going to use the actual from the previous period and we're going to take the difference between previous two periods so taking the difference between previous two periods will get you the trend in the data set so what we're doing here is we are adjusting the actual demand from the previous period with the trend component right so knowing the difference between previous two periods will allow you to slight adjustment to to the to the next period forecast let's go back to the excel so in this case uh, we are going to work with the cinnamon data set so as you can see there's a trend upwards again if you're not clear by simply looking at data set go to insert and do a line chart and from here we can see that there's, there's a trend upwards right so i'm going to again add another column which is cinnamon buns forecast when you have a trend so in formula i'm going to use ft equals to at minus one plus the difference between previous two periods actual demand at minus two so we're doing for f16 so which means a15 the demand from previous period and the difference between previous two periods so this difference will get you the trend component so we have from the previous period for the cinnamon ones the demand actual was 33 plus 33 minus 31 so we have slightly adjusted our forecast by two units to account for trend component right so if we apply the formula it will be equals actual from the previous period so which means c16 plus the difference between previous two periods which means c16 minus c15 so that will give you 35 units and i mean at this point i am expecting that you guys are very comfortable with at least applying the basic excel formulas as we did here but again if you're struggling please do some practice because that's only going to make you more comfortable when it comes to excel and if you have any questions so please feel free to reach me out ask during the live sessions so that concludes the knife forecasting methods so we discussed three different approaches to knife forecast when the time series is stable when time series have seasonal variations and when the data has trend uh, so i will see you in the next video in that video we talk about moving average and weighted moving average thank you very much